Welcome to this Tobacco University video, where if you're considering adding carbon dioxide to your cannabis production, this will go over the basics to help you make an informed decision and things to look out for uh, if you are considering this. All right, let's look at carbon dioxide basics for cannabis production. So starting first, you have to understand that cannabis specifically is what's called a C3 plant, similar in structure for its photosynthetic process as tomatoes would be. The other types are called uh, C4 plants. They include corn and sugarcane, and cam plants are cacti. And you can see that there's different uh, processes that they go through as they prepare carbon dioxide for the Kelvin cycle. Uh, C3 plants is basically a direct incorporation of carbon dioxide to the Kelvin cycle. So keep in mind, with carbon dioxide, uh, it's heavier than air. So driest to add carbon dioxide, as we can see here, put it in the suspended kind of container here. Well, this is not advised. We can see that the carbon dioxide, um, in this case dry ice, is kind of going from the solid state to the gaseous state, and here it's falling through the plants. But this is not going to really create anything that's going to be very consistent or really meet the plant's needs. Yes, we'll add carbon dioxide, but it will not add it in a consistent manner. Now the environmental factors you want to consider with a plant in general is that light intensity, the amount of carbon dioxide, and the temperature. Keep in mind as the light intensity increases, there'll be a certain plateau. Same goes with the amount of carbon dioxide. You can increase the rate um, of uh, the concentration of carbon dioxide. This will increase the rate of photosynthesis. And then temperature, there will be a rise in ideal or optimum temperature, and then a falling off from there. So you want to keep in mind all these factors for that your plant is growing in. So we're going to focus, of course, here on the carbon dioxide aspect. It's important uh, input to the photosynthetic equation. As we can see here, carbon dioxide plus water plus sunlight will produce sugar and oxygen. All of the carbon that forms in the sugar end product here uh, originated as carbon dioxide molecule in the air. And that's why there's six of them here, because we have to make a six carbon sugar. So low carbon dioxide and equals low gro growth rate, and these little brackets mean concentration. So if we look at a lettuce study, notice that there are changes in dry mass or yield uh, at different light intensities across the range of CO2 concentration levels. So here's our CO2 concentration, and we can see here different light intensities. So we can make the conclusion here that increasing the light intensity, no matter what the concentration of carbon dioxide, will increase yields, at least provided in this study here. But we can see also the trend that as you increase carbon dioxide concentration from ambient, which is going to be around 400, somewhere around this range right here, we can see that there is an increase overall in the dry mass or yield. Now this reference article that if I included here uh, this is looking at the photosynthetic response of cannabis uh, in relation to variations in photosynthetic photon flux densities, temperature, and for this video, carbon dioxide conditions, which you're welcome to check this out for more details. Now net photosynthesis in cannabis. So when we're looking at specifically cannabis, the optimum temperature for photosynthesis is around 30 degrees Celsius. Temperature higher than 30 degrees has been uh, has adverse effects uh, on the photosynthetic rate. It actually starts to curl over and start to decrease. At 25 degrees Celsius, the rate of photosynthesis increased, but with increasing PPFD, and that's we're looking at the light intensity measurement. But this uh, trend was peaked at about 1,500 uh, micromoles of PDA of PPFD, which is the light intensity, at 3 degrees Celsius, and decreased at higher light intensities. So this means as you increase light intensities, there's kind of this optimum here based on intensity and temperature, and more is not always better. Looking at the optimum temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius, and 1,500 micromoles for light intensity should be around your target levels. Now, carbon dioxide levels. Uh, in this case, PN is net photos photosynthesis. We see this column here, and WEE uh, e is water use efficiency on the leaves of cannabis sativa. And here's the carbon dioxide levels here. We can see that there's a change. We can see there's also alterations in these. Now, as we're looking at what has the highest net photosynthesis, well, we can see here 750 uh, micromoles. Uh, of concentration of carbon dioxide. Just as a reminder, around 400 is what would be considered atmospheric levels. Now, again, comparing here to our light levels, notice uh, how at high light levels, plants can be better can better utilize the added carbon dioxide. If adding carbon dioxide, make sure plants are not light limited. So just adding more carbon dioxide is okay, but we could see here is that ambient level 
uh, here with low light, well, we could add a lot of carbon dioxide and really not get any more kind of increase in the rate of photosynthesis. And we can see that these, all of these, even the highlight level does have a sort of plateau to it. So this should be, the light intensity should be measured with a PAR meter to ensure that adding carbon dioxide will actually be utilized. Where are your light levels at? And this is just an example of this study showing what's considered low, medium, and high light levels. Now, concerns about carbon dioxide from a grower standpoint, keep in mind that concentrations above 5,000 can be harmful to, to humans. And when we're looking at uh, enriching an area with carbon dioxide for plants, we're looking really not going much more than 1,000. So it is not necessarily going to cause any sort of harmful effects or hopefully any of the conditions labeled here. We're looking at the volume of the air, really not getting into any of that here, the levels that would be acceptable for plants. Now, how do you estimate your carbon dioxide usage? Because everyone wants to know well, how much you're going to use. Just providing a random uh, example here for uh, an area. We're looking at a 32 foot by 40 foot high tunnel that was 32 foot wide, 40 feet long, and 12 feet at the peak, operating at about 1,000 parts per million of carbon dioxide with the system turned off during venting, periods of high heat. It uses 50 pounds of CO2 per week. And again, this is intended to simply be a rough estimate, looking at if you're using carbon dioxide from compressed air bottles. You can expect if you have this area to go through about one 50 pound bottle a week, uh, plus or minus uh, from there, but just a rough idea there. Now, when should carbon dioxide be added? Uh, in short, from emergence to harvest. Uh, people say, oh, I wanna save it for the harvest, I wanna do it at the beginning, really for the entire life cycle can be definitely utilized. However, if it's not possible that for the entire life cycle, then it actually may be more critical in the early stages to get the plants established early. Seedling phases uh, is great time because often plants might be slow to get going, but the carbon dioxide can help increase root mass, which of course is very important, especially in the early stages of plant growth. Now, autoflowers and carbon dioxide, well, all strains will benefit from the adding carbon dioxide, but it's highly recommended for autoflowers because there is a set number of days between when they emerge and when they will be harvested. Growers should be seeking every possible way to maximize each day, and carbon dioxide enrichment allows for higher light intensities to be used, again, assuming all other factors uh, are not limiting, which will result in a greater biomass production. This will translate into higher yields on a plant that only has a set number of days to complete its life cycle. So if you're looking at, well, what I wanna try it, try it with autoflowers because they have a set number of days, you wanna maximize each and every day. So will carbon dioxide increase uh, plant production? I say yes, but, or yes if, there are no other limiting factors. If your plants are receiving optimum light, optimum nutrients, water, aeration, then carbon dioxide can be used to boost your plants in need. Keep in mind that with the addition of carbon dioxide, the plants will be able to take advantage of greater light intensities and will likely require more nutrients to meet the increased growth rates. So if you've been growing a plant or a certain uh, type of plant for an extended period of time and feel you have everything dialed in, and now you want to go through and add carbon dioxide, some of those things may change, particularly watering frequencies or nutrient consumption might be higher. So have records which you should be keeping, compare those rec records, but realize Carbon dioxide may speed things up, but a lot of times growers can utilize that to their advantage.